Hey everybody, welcome to module five. <coughs> I am still trying to bounce back from the flu, and so we are going to have class this week online, so I'm not sharing any germs with anybody. This video will walk you through module five, and if you run into any questions after you've viewed the video, please go ahead and ask those questions right here in the questions forum. I get those by my email, and I'm happy to answer them. If you have specific questions about your grades, go ahead and email me those, but if it's questions about the content, how do you do something, where do you find something, ask those in the questions forum, and if you know the answer, please go ahead and answer. That always helps everybody out. So we're going to work in learning module five. You'll notice that in addition to the module quiz we do every week, <coughs> your assignment is going to be a parent newsletter, and you're also going to turn in that first key assessment check-in. So if you haven't taken a look at the major projects folder for the key assessment information, make sure that you do that. And the assignment for this week is also linked <coughs> into module five. So when we scroll down to Module 5, we're focusing this week on how we can use Google Docs and um, different Google QR codes um, to teach. And all of that is in the Advanced Organizer. Each week, you really should be opening up your Advanced Organizer. Um, if you're not already doing this, make sure you click on File and then make a copy. I want you to copy that to your own Google Drive so that you can type in the Advanced Organizer and make sure you're saving those because this information will help you as you move forward and move into your own teaching practice. So when we're thinking about using Google Docs to teach, just like here, I have a Google Doc and I'm using it to provide instruction for you. You can use it when you're teaching students. So I've got three articles and a great video on the teaching channel that I'd like you to check out that talk about ways you can use Google Docs to teach. You should have at least three ideas when you're done reading the three articles and looking at the videos for how you could use Google Docs when you're teaching. And then you're going to look at QR codes. Lots and lots of teachers are using QR codes to engage students in learning. There are two excellent articles that you can check out that talk about using QR codes. So I want you to think about the different ways you can use those in your class, whether you're teaching preschool students or whether you're teaching you know, high school students in an AP class or anywhere in between, QR codes can be used to help students find content. After you've looked at some QR code ideas, I want you to take a look back because the learning that we're doing in class, I want you to just keep in mind it's not isolated from module to module, but the learning builds on it each week. So go back to um, your week two information and even week three, some of the websites and the apps that you created a username and a password for. So maybe you're thinking about Khan Academy or Edpuzzle. I want you to think, choose the ones that are of interest to you and think how a student could use that site. So if I chose Khan Academy, you know, how would a student use Khan Academy and how would a teacher use Khan Academy, for example. So you're going to list the website or the app you chose and then talk about how a student could use it and how a teacher could use it. If you aren't sure, you looked at a website, checked it out, watched the intro video, and you just really can't figure out how Padlet is used, for example, ask that in the course Q&A discussion board so that we can all help each other out with our learning. Screen capturing is a fantastic way to visually capture something that you want to share with students. Um, a lot of times we talked last week about capturing images using Google Images, but if we want to make sure that what we're sharing um, is copyright free, that there's no, we're not infringing on anything, and we just want to share some quick information with students, screen capturing is a great, great way to do that. <coughs> I referenced this back to Kathy Schrock's website where we looked at intellectual property. Um, to make sure that we're all on the same page. You should still be working with our 50 things you can do with Google Classroom. Once we get closer to spring break, we're going to be building some things in our Google Classroom, so make sure that you're understanding how Google Classroom can be used to support student learning. And after you've done all that, you're ready to take your module quiz. So after the quiz, you're going to come back in and build a parent newsletter. 
And this is a fantastic way to um, use Google Docs. So one of the first things that you're going to do is build your parent newsletter. So to start your parent newsletter, what you're going to do is start with a blank Google Doc. So if I am in my drive, my EDF 204 drive, I'm going to click on New, and I'm going to click on Google Doc. And I am going to call this news, this Google Doc my parent newsletter. So you're going to call it something like, I'm going to call it Mrs. Clark's News. You title it according to your classroom. And then you're going to share some facts about you <laughs> that a family would like to know. The assignment also says that after you share a short bio, you should share some helpful information. So helpful links. If I am a preschool teacher, maybe I want to link into starfall.com and um, I'm going to tell parents great info about alphabet sounds and maybe I would do ABC uh, as .com, which is another website. You'll make sure your hyperlinks work and then tell the family what's good about that website. If you're in a high school class, maybe you want to start talking about colleges, but share some helpful information with families. And then after you're done, you'll make your newsletter look fantastic, right? Add some clip art, maybe a picture of yourself, picture of your pet, something that will help you connect with families. After you follow the requirements for the parent newsletter, you're going to click on the share button and I'm going to get a shareable link. I want to make sure that it's not locked within my school domain, but rather that anybody can view it that has the link. So once I've got that anyone can view it, I'm going to save this and I'm going to get my hyperlink done. <coughs> and then I'm going to go back to the requirements and I am going to the QR code generator because I'm going to get a QR code for this newsletter so that I can share this with um, my parents, right? Because we were learning about QR codes. So once I get my QR code, I'm going to download this QR code so that I can upload that and make it, it has to be static from this site in order to, to do that. I'm going to download it as a PNG file and then that way I can take my QR code and insert it um, into a newsletter or wherever I wanted to share that with families. So when I'm back here in my assignment requirements, it says to create my newsletter, get a QR code, and I've done that. So I would share the QR code and the newsletter. The other thing that you're going to do is share this in your key assessment document. So um, and then when you get to the, uh, the key assessment information for what you need, um, it will tell you that for this key assessment check-in that um, you're going to add some information to your key assessment. So <coughs> I'm going to open up my key assessment and show you where things should go, but um, just a quick update. We talked about writing that welcome paragraph where you introduce yourself and that quick philosophy of teaching, those I believe statements. And we talked about that last week. We also talked about referencing one in task standards. And the in task standards are in that key assessment rubric. And remember, that's under the major projects section in Blackboard, right? The, oops, the rubric is at the end of the key assessment document. <coughs> You're going to add a link to your teacher webpage that you've already created. You made a resume last week, so you're going to link that into the welcome section. You're going to put your KDE exploration from last week in the PD section. That's the very last section of the key assessment. And then the parent newsletter you just made, you're going to add that in both the welcome section and the communication section. The nice thing about the key assessment is we're looking um, at 
making sure as instructors that you understand all the different ways technology can be used. So several things that we are making um, can be used in multiple ways, and I'll continue to help you develop that. But for sure, we're going to put our parent newsletter in two different places in our key assessment. So I am going back to my EDF 204 folder, and I am opening up my most recent, my version of the key assessment for the spring. So this is the one that we were working on in class, and you have a link to this in the class notes. So in class, we talked about building out your welcome, talking about who you are, and then I gave an example of how you could talk about the in-task standards here in your welcome. In your philosophy statement, you're going to talk about what you believe. In your resume, you're going to hyperlink here how you what your resume uh, link is. The introduction letter for parents, this is your parent newsletter. You're going to hyperlink it here. And then the link to your personal teacher webpage, you're going to link here. And then as I scroll down further, we talked about hyperlinking in under technology for communication. One example is I can use a parent newsletter to communicate what is happening in my class. And then you'll hyperlink the words parent newsletter to your parent newsletter. Right, so that's the one I just created. I have a hyperlink and I'm going to click it right there. So now we can go in and check out my parent newsletter. And then when I scroll down further, almost to the end of this document, I've got a section on professional development. And here you can hyperlink into your KDE exploration. All right, I hope that everybody feels like they got some great information in this tutorial where I have my communication section where I was going to, whoop, I already scrolled past it, where I was going to hyperlink in my parent newsletter. I can also hyperlink in, I can also share a QR code with families and I could go ahead and hyperlink in the QR code that I have so that families could see that QR code. And here it is. I'm going to dump it right here. So now I've got my QR code in my newsletter. And now I've got two examples um, already with just the one parent newsletter, right? So within a few short modules, we're only in module five, we've already got some great information that we've added to our key assessment document, and you've already discovered several different ways that you can use Google Docs to support student learning and communicating with families. I hope that you guys have a fantastic week and stay flu-free and bronchitis and all the other bugs that are running around free. If you've got questions, don't hesitate to reach out by the Blackboard discussion board or shoot me an email or give me a call. I am happy to help. I hope you have a great week.